You see this? Do you see this? Do you know what this is? This is the Rolls Royce of e-scooters. Hello Electroheads, this is the VSET 9 Plus. I've had this scooter on loan for about a week now, courtesy of our friends over at Personal Electric Transport, and God, I love it. Let me tell you, the weather in England this past week has been awful, even by English standards. It's just been snow, rain, mud, and sadness. But none of that has stopped me from riding this scooter as much as I'm able to for the past week. I am obsessed with it. In a moment, I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is that makes this scooter so next level, so luxurious, but first, Like and subscribe. Oh, and while you're at it, get down in the comments section and let me know what kind of e-ride you're enjoying at the moment. I'm always on the lookout for new stuff to test and review. I'd love to hear your recommendations. Also, also, we have a Patreon now. Check out the link in the description below if you want to see me doing things for money. Within reason. So VSET is a shiny new electric scooter brand. They recently just released their first range of products, the 8, the 9 Plus, and the 10 Plus. Each model is a little bit bulkier, rangier, and faster than the one underneath it, and the prices reflect that. I've had a go on all three, but for me, this one, the 9 Plus, is the sweet spot. The 10, for my personal preferences, just a bit too big and bulky. It's also so fast. It's too fast. The 8, meanwhile, is an excellent scooter. I just personally prefer having a bit more range and speed, which I get from the 9 Plus. Now, we'll talk about performance in a second, but first, I think I need to explain my bold claim that this is the Rolls-Royce of e-scooters, because I wasn't just saying that. Not clickbait. In the automotive world, Rolls-Royce is known for being the best of the best, the creme de la creme. If you want the ultimate luxury, the highest quality, there is nowhere else to go other than Rolls. And in the world of scooting, all of those things that I just said apply to the VSET. Riding this scooter is an absolute delight. It is so smooth, so effortless, so luxurious. Honestly, I'm not sure I've ever experienced a more enjoyable way of getting from one end of a city to another. It is just in a class of its own. It's like floating on a cloud of opulence. I'm actually pretty sure on the way over here this morning, I ran someone over, barely felt it. I didn't do that, by the way. I'm actually a very safe and cautious scooter rider, as you should be. Now, this ultra-luxurious ride is the result of a few factors combined, but we have to start with the build quality. The VSET is just beautifully built. Interestingly, the people that make these scooters are the same people responsible for Zero scooters. I've tried Zero scooters before, and I thought that they were fast, but a little bit rickety. They didn't feel super stable. They didn't feel very nicely made. Clearly, they've learned their lesson, they listened to the feedback, and they have doubled down on build quality with these V-sets. It's just solid and weighty and sturdy. There's no squeaks or rattles or creaks, and that translates to a really, really stable ride. I think it's the only scooter I've ridden that doesn't immediately get the wobbles when you take one hand off. I'm not suggesting you should do that. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how stable this thing feels underfoot. The other reason for this ultra-smooth ride, and you may have guessed it from watching the footage, is the suspension. The VSET has so much suspension travel and it just absorbs bumps and cracks in the road like they are not even there. I've said this about a million times before on this channel, but suspension is usually the key difference that separates e-rides I feel safe riding on the road from e-rides that feel like you're only one mistake away from a nasty accident. And this one has all of the suspension. All of it. It's also got some nice, grippy, chunky tyres, which work really well in wet and greasy conditions, like the ones we had when we were filming the B-roll for this video a couple of days ago. That being said, if you live somewhere where it never rains, you can switch those out for slick tyres, or if you're more off-roading inclined, you can get proper treaded tyres too. Okay, let's talk performance now, because this is another area where I think VSET have just nailed it. Just a quick interlude here. No one is paying me to say these things. There isn't some VSET employee off screen here with a machete. It's really just this good. Is that good? Can I go now? Now this 9 Plus has a top speed of 30 miles an hour, about 50 kph. That's more than enough as far as I'm concerned. I don't really have any interest in going faster than that on a scooter, certainly not on the road. On a racetrack, maybe, if wearing lots of pads. The 10 Plus, by the way, does 50 miles per hour. 
50. But what's really interesting about the performance of this scooter is the amount of customization as far as modes. There are three different speed modes which vary the sharpness of the acceleration and the top speed, and it's all actually quite tame and manageable, right up until you press this button here. At which point, all hell breaks loose. Because that's the button that engages dual motor mode. Oh yes, normally the scooter is rear wheel drive, but you push that button and it's all wheel drive. In rear wheel drive mode, the scooter is quick, but it's gentle and perfectly manageable. Beginner friendly even. But with all wheel drive on in speed mode three, the acceleration is face melting. Seriously, you need to always know exactly what mode you're in on this scooter, because if you forget that you're in all wheel drive and you bury the throttle, bye. The way this scooter accelerates in maximum attack mode, you would honestly think it's just gonna keep on climbing to 50, 60 miles per hour. It's actually kind of surprising when it tops out at 30, but I'm glad that it does. Because if it was a 60 mile per hour scooter, I'd have to be very careful with the throttle. Because it's limited to 30, I can sort of just bury it and not worry too much. Personally, I have mostly been riding it in the really fast setting because, well, it's really fun. And it's also quite useful for pulling away from traffic lights. That being said, if you're not into going super fast, you could own this scooter for years and years, never press that button and have a great time. Plus, you'd get twice as much range. Range, by the way, is estimated at around 30 miles. Obviously, it really depends on who you are, how you're riding and how trigger happy you are. So yes, it's a very quick scooter if you want it to be, but it never feels overwhelmed by its power. It's always stable, it's always sturdy. It's also got really, really good brakes. Disc brakes front and rear, which can bring it to a stop very quickly if needed. They're also quite good for doing skids. And then there's just the little things like the design of this scooter. I love the black and green paint job and up close it looks every bit as expensive as it feels. There are also some really thoughtful little touches on this scooter that I've not seen on many, if any, other scooters. For example, keys for added security. If you want to turn it on, you've got to press the button and then touch the key to the little pad. Voila. It's also got uh, twin charging ports for super speedy charging. And then here's the best one, which I genuinely only realized today. Do you see these little rubbery buttons on the handlebars here? See that? Indicators! Yeah. It's got indicators. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I know this scooter is not going to be for everyone. For one, it's quite expensive. For two, as you can tell from how out of breath and pink I am, it's a big old hefty boy. This heckin' chonker weighs in at 25 kilos, which is quite a lot. It does fold and you can carry it very short distances. Getting it into your house or into the office is not gonna be a problem, but you wouldn't even dream about carrying it around a supermarket, for example. If you want proper portability, you're better off with the E2 GT, which I reviewed a little while ago. I'll put a link up here somewhere. But for those who simply want the best, the highest quality, the smoothest ride. I'm not sure any scooter can hold a candle to the new VSET range. I really do just think that this is one of those bar raising products. I've not seen this kind of quality in an e-scooter before and I, I want one. So there we have it, my friends. That was just a quick review of the VSET 9 Plus, the Rolls Royce of e-scooters. Let me know down in the comments, what are you riding at the moment? What would you love to see me test and review on the channel? Make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. If you fancy a VSET of your own, be sure to buy it from our friends over at Personal Electric Transport. You can even use the link in the description of this video for a cheeky discount.